Shalom brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus welcome to another leadership lesson based on the leadership skills of king david in this bible study we will focus on humility as a christian virtue and how king david remained faithful to the lord throughout his life unlike pharaoh who lost his whole army in the red sea as we read in exodus chapter 14 Likewise did King Saul when he was stripped of his kingdom and evil spirit from the Lord possessed him finally we read of him committing a suicide in 1 Samuel chapter 31 in another instance king Belshazzar appears to be very proud of his riches that he possessed even though Daniel warned him of his sinful ways his pride stood in the way of good counsel the pharaoh of egypt the first king of israel king saul and belshazzar the babylonian king all proved without hesitation as we read in proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 that pride goes before destruction the bible refers to pride in 46 instances and not surprisingly in all places bible refers to pride as damaging for humanity Here is a list of the previous leadership lessons from King David's life as I have published them on YouTube responsibility obedience patience constant communion with God courageous meekness and this being our seventh one in this series humility the links to these bible study will be in the description box below and i am sure it will be a great asset to any aspiring leader or one in a leadership position within the church or in the community so why wait my dear friends go ahead and listen and be encouraged share these videos with those whom you know are in a leadership position i would personally recommend you to read the old testament books of 1 and 2 samuel that documents king david's life and reign now if you do not have a physical bible handy then i will leave a link to the online bible and the offline bible app in the description box below however the central theme of this message is taken from 1 samuel chapter 16 here the lord rejects saul as the king of the israelites and knowing this the prophet of israel samuel is saddened god reproves samuel for grieving and commands him to get back to business god commands samuel to go to bethlehem to a man named jesse who had eight sons god had selected one of jesse's sons to replace king saul in the hope that one of the seven present in the ceremony would succeed king Saul Jesse paraded seven of his sons as we read in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 10 now prophet Samuel starts to wonder as to who will replace king Saul sadly god rejected all seven so Samuel asks Jesse if these are the only sons that he has Jesse says he has got one more David the youngest however the boy is presently looking after the sheep in the field Samuel asks for the boy to be brought in whom God chose to anoint as the next king of Israel as we read in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 12 in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13 and 14 it is recorded that the holy spirit of the god came upon David from that day onwards and the holy spirit departed from king Saul and an evil spirit from the lord troubled Saul here i would like to make a few observations firstly jesse did not even bother to include the young lad david in this ceremony on the pretext that david is of not of age to be anointed as a king for david was not present in the party Secondly, Samuel was looking at the external strength and beauty of the men who was paraded before him as in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verses 6 to 10. Unlike God 
who was looking at the heart of the man as is in verse 7 and 12 finally david is sent for and as he comes in he does not make any complaint as to why he was not involved in the ceremony instead it is all business here onwards in verse 12 samuel makes a note of david's external features whereas the lord looks into a man's heart as we read in verse 7 the lord then commands samuel to arise and anoint david for david is the chosen one to replace king saul the purpose of the visit of samuel is now therefore fulfilled having anointed david david the young lad now replaces king saul as the new king of israel in proverbs chapter 11 verse 12 king solomon says so when pride comes then comes shame so is what the lord says that he will break the pride of the powerful as is in leviticus chapter 26 verse 19 it was therefore the pride of soul that failed him to have a heart like god's here are a few ways that soul's pride was made obvious firstly after waiting 7 days as the prophet samuel does not turn up king saul took it upon himself to act as a priest soon after the sacrifice was offered samuel turns up now samuel is not pleased at all with saul and he therefore rebukes him that he has acted foolishly and because of this his kingdom is doomed and god has chosen another one in his place as we read in 1 samuel chapter 13 verses 8 to 14 secondly the lord commanded saul to destroy the amalekites right down to the last living creature because of the way they had destroyed the israelites when they came up out of egypt he blatantly disobeyed the command from the lord by taking the king of amalekites agag alive and his men decided to keep the best of the cattle sheep calves and lambs as we read in 1 samuel chapter 15 in another instance king saul was consumed with jealousy and attempted to kill the anointed king of god david four times as we read in 1 samuel chapter 18 in a, the fourth example king saul rather than repenting for his many wrongs and seeking the help of the lord saul sought guidance from a witch as is recorded in 1 samuel chapter 28 now if you are to look around ourselves this is something that is very much manifest in our day to day life for example being jealous of someone else's achievements and progress tarot reading horoscope reading palm reading astrology as some among the endless list of activities a christian practices before we go any further let me explain to you what humility means in the secular world humility in the secular world means the quality of having a modest or low view of one's importance whereas in the biblical context humility does mean a recognition of self in relation to god james chapter 4 verse 6 states god opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble james then continues in verse 10 that those who humble before the lord will the lord lift up in honor c.s lewis once said true humility is not thinking less of yourself it is thinking of yourself less now that we have a clear understanding of uh, david's anointing as of king of israel and secondly the difference between the worldly and the biblical viewpoint of humility now it is time to expound the meaning of humility as manifested by king david Shortly after the anointing of David he was filled with the Holy Spirit from the Lord this helped David to gain a divine understanding of the intentions of God for his own future 
and that of the people of Israel. As we all know that knowledge is power, which makes a person accountable for behaving wisely with the people around him. And David excelled in this. Let us now look at some examples where David excelled in humility. In our first example, Saul is tormented by the evil spirit as the Holy Spirit had departed King Saul. Therefore, Saul's men ask of the king's permission to bring in David who is proficient in playing the harper and that the Lord was with him as we read in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 18. David presented himself before King Saul as he was commanded in verse 21. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 we hear that uh, David was sent back to his father's house as the Philistines were once again gearing up for war against the Israelites. Israel on one side of the hill and the Philistines on another side with a valley in between them. In our third example, in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 17, Jesse, David's father, asked him to run an errand with the food for his elder brothers who are in the army and for the captain of the army and at the same time to bring back news about what's happening in the front lines of the battle. In these examples, we see that David, knowing that he was the anointed king, accepted to be a musician in King Saul's court. At the same time, he was ready to go back to his father's house to resume his duties as a shepherd boy and on demand was willing and ready to be an errand boy. In our next set of examples, we have David sinning against God and his subjects. It was during David's reign as a king that he was guilty of adultery with Bathsheba as we read in 2 Samuel chapter 11. David then ordered to kill Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, in the battle front lines so that he could marry Bathsheba. In our third example, in 2 Samuel chapter 24, David was lifted up with pride to number his people which was a great sin against God, for this showed that David trusted in his strength rather than on the all-sufficient God El Shaddai. But there was a difference between a King Saul and King David's approach that I wish to highlight here. King Saul, rather than depending on the strength of God and a wait upon the Lord for his mercy, he went and consulted a witch. Isn't this exactly what many of us Christians do? Consulting the tarot readers, palmists, astrologers or even the fake prosperity pastors. Whereas King David was able to freely admit his shortcomings and sins against God. As he wrote in Psalms 51 verse 3, For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. David is seen here to be acknowledging his sin and is fearful and prays to God about this. Therefore, he was forgiven. Charles Spurgeon calls Psalms 51 as a sinner's guide, as it shows the sinner how to return to God's grace. In a nutshell, we learn from David's life that honor did not spoil him. Secondly, David freely admitted his shortcomings and sin. And finally, David gave God glory for every victory in his life. It was therefore the humility of David which made him a great leader in the eyes of God instead of being arrogant and misusing his power. Jesus said that whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven because whoever exalt himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Even our Lord and Saviour, being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, as we read in Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. James writes that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Solomon knew that with the humble is the wisdom. So do you want God to reward you?
They know this, the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is the riches and honor of life. So how do you practice humility? Firstly, you can spend more time listening than you do your talking. Secondly, admit when you are wrong. Confess your sins to the only living God. Give others credit for what belongs to them. Praise others and praise the Lord. In conclusion, even though David was a very brave king who on numerous occasions sinned against God, but it was his willingness to submit to the will of God and humble his heart in repentance when he sinned that stood out. Let us therefore now close our eyes and pray to conclude this Bible study. Dear God, I need you. I am humbly calling out to you. I am tired of doing things my way. Help me to start doing things your way. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to trust and love you. Help me to understand your mercy in my life. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Watch out for our next video. And until then, bye.